morning everybody. Today we are fishing with a good mate of mine. He's the store manager, of course, at Tingalpa Anaconda, Ryan Lomax. Good afternoon and good morning to you, mate. Thanks for having us, Paul. I've got to say morning, afternoon, because everyone watches the show at different times. <laughs> but it's a good start to the day. That's it, yeah. It's a beautiful day out here. Is, mate, tell yeah. us, what are we doing today on such a glorious day? It's stuff. Well, hopefully we're out here to catch a few flathead mm. um, and um, try and learn something for the upcoming Flathead Classic. Well, you guys are a big sponsor of the Flathead Classic. I'm just going to turn us this way a bit. But one thing I do notice is that there's a lot of anglers that come from all around the country, and it is all about mm -hmm. learning you know, and swapping tips and tricks with other anglers out there. And this is what you're all about as well, isn't it? Really? Yeah, absolutely. So Anaconda's our, um, our sponsor of yeah. the Flathead Classic. Yeah. Uh, we want to spread the word that Anaconda's uh, here to have fun and get, yeah. your, get your family outdoors and um, you know get out. Have some fun and catch some flooded. And that's so, what we're doing yeah. today. So we're going to share trips, trips, trips. tricks, <laughs> and secrets. <laughs> All coming up on this episode as we target the flatty for the flathead classic. Good on you, mate. High fives, buddy. <laughs> So the gear I'm running today, I've gone for an Eggy 7 foot 6 Katana. It's the Shimano Squid Jig Rod. I absolutely love it. I like that a little bit more length than I am flicking for flathead. The simple fact is the less movement on the wrist gives a nice bit of feel onto the tip and it sort of pushes right down to the lure. So you're really not working it too hard. You're just doing little flicks like this and then seven feet away off that rod tip, it's working like so. And that's what the lure is doing under the water and the fish tend to like it. I've got the XSense 3000 MHG on it, great little reel. And I find this here with a Kariki braid, I've got about a 10 pound Kariki braid, so nice and light. I'm only running six pound leader. I don't want to go too heavy on this, but of course that also gives me the opportunity or the fish the opportunity to break me off, but I want to go nice and light. I've got on that the three and a quarter inch uh, pearl with a uh, pink tip, that is the gulp shrimp. I like it. And of course I am running a one six with a two oh uh, jig head on that TT. So this little rig here should be ideal. Fingers crossed we get a couple of fish. Another tip for you is look for nature. Find out what nature's driving home to you. Look for birds, look for the seagulls, look for the cormorants, look for the pelicans, everything that's sort of feeding out there as well. They're looking for fish and bait fish, and it's the bait fish that's going to bring the flathead in as well. So if you find those signs, there's a good chance you're going to hook up to a fish. If you're after flathead, great. Brim, great. Anything like that. They're going to the supermarket like you do to shop for your groceries. In this case, they're shopping for fish. Oh, just here, righto. Oh. It's a rat, but it was just there, I saw it. Nice little flatty. Thank you, champs. What a beautiful fish. Only small, but I tell you what, I remember, ah, you there, there you. There you go. As a kid, you'd see those fish all lined up around the females. You might see five or 10 smaller rat males, and then you see the big female on the lie, and that's when they're starting to spawn up. So if you're catching a few of the small ones, keep pegging that area, keep working that area, and there's a good chance you're gonna hook up to that big one. That is exactly what we're gonna continue to do. Caught a fish, again, as I always say, check the leader. That feels pretty good to me. All right, Ryan, we're on the board, mate. Ryan, those little weed beds, mate. Not bad. Yeah, that's, that's not bad, Paul. Hey, that's okay. There you go. That Look at him, done. just cruising along. But that's the thing, there's much darker fish out here, buddy, because of the, uh, the weed bed, the mud. And when you get that lure sitting in the mix of that sand or mud between the weed, these fish are just going to absolutely crush it. But a much darker fish compared to the sandy flathead you get in those uh, the cleaner water you know absolutely beautiful nice fish so after that flathead one thing i've got to say to you guys is always check your leader even though that fish didn't have it down his throat it was taken around the top they tend to move their head left and right really fast and quite vigorously and what happens is obviously it frays up your braid again that hook is not down his throat at all the actual end of the jig head and the leader was sticking a fair way out but it's still enough to fray up so all we're going to do there is cut that off, always check it. If you get a good fish on 
and the next one, good chance that fray could break away. So my favourite trustworthy knot that I love to use, of course, is the uni knot. I find it super simple, quick and easy and effective. And all I have to do here is just go through, let the weight drop down, have plenty of tag up the top end. And from here, we're just gonna wrap that leader around the loop. It's pretty hard to see, but you can see it's just going through the loop, around the leader, through the loop, around the leader. Do that about five or six times. And then just pull that tight. There it is there, pull it down. I'm gonna take that knot just off the edge of the hook a bit. And there we have it. Trim that up. And what I've got here now, just a beautiful little loop just sitting in front of that eye on the jig head. I'll tighten that up and of course what's gonna happen there, it just allows a little bit more freedom for that jig head to move around. Beautiful. Ryan, I guess when you are fishing these waters, mate, it's all about getting up on the shallows early morning like we are now mm -hmm. and just being really self quiet. We've got the Garmin Electric there, the force motor, we're just cruising these banks, can't stick up on the shallows and, and that's where the fish are gonna be lying. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I've got another one. Oh, I'll drop that one. That's all right, Paul, I'll get it behind me. Mate, you can get it. You just cast, cast him behind me. <laughs> work, <laughs> work the used water. <laughs> Yeah, guys, um, you know, today I'm using the Atomic Arrows. Uh, so this guy here is part of their estuary series. Um, so it's a seven foot, uh, six to 12 pound uh, rod. So, um, you know, fairly um, medium to fast action. Um, you know, I use this rod from anything from flooded, um, you know, small snapper out in the bay. Um, makes a really, really good uh, bass rod out in the fresh water as well. Uh, I've paired it up with a um, Stratic CI4 Plus. Um, so, you know, this is one of the previous reels. Uh, the current model's called the Vanford from Shimano. Uh, so it's a little 2500 uh, spool with 10 pound Nomad braid, uh, just in that pink color there, so we can see where the line goes. Um, awesome little outfit, nice and light. Uh, that carbon infused graphite reel makes this really, really balanced, nice and light. Uh, and as for a uh, leader, just a little bit of uh, 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon. You know, fluorocarbon, everyone knows that um, you know, it has no light spectrum through the water, so it's invisible to fish. Um, and we're running a um, squidgy today. So an 80 mil squidgy fish uh, in killer tomato, one of my favorite colors, um, on a 3016 ounce chick head. So um, absolute killer of an outfit. So if you guys are after something like this, come into your local Anaconda store, hit us up, and we'll, um, we'll definitely get you guys going. So Ryan, flatter classic, mate. Um, you've fished it a couple of times now. How do you find it as a, as a competition, buddy? Yeah, yeah, really good. Um, you know, Paul, I mean, you get a lot of people coming from, you know, all over the country to fish it now, which is really great. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's great to see that there's heaps of sponsors on board now. Um, you know, and, and the prizes are absolutely out of control for everyone who attends. Um, you've really got a good chance to actually win something. Um, you know, and you know, it's just a great celebration of being able to go out and catch a flathead and have, have a bit of fun. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's a big thing as well is that people got to understand that, that it's not a catch and kill comp. Mm -hmm. It's all catch and release, so. Correct. You know, that token that's given out the night beforehand is then uh, put up next to your fish and take a photo if the fish is over a certain size and then at the end of the day you submit your photo. So there's no cheating or anything like that. It's a really good competition in that, mm -hmm. in that way that it's fair for everyone. Absolutely. And it's family. Yeah, 100%. How's the fishing on your side of the boat, mate? Uh, yeah, nil at this stage. Nil. Is my 32 centimetre count? <laughs> <laughs> I did get a bigger one. Slight. We saw some thumpers go past. Yeah, though. we did actually. Saw some thumpers go past. Maybe that was an express catch and release, seeing them without catching uh, them. Yeah, possibly. That's it. So where we are now is we're just fishing this basin that is draining out from the tide. As you can see, there's a lot of flats all starting to move up here now and be exposed. So we're just slowly using the Garmin Force Electric just to take us up further into this bay and be really stealth and quiet. And we're just gonna cast our lines as we get up and a little bit closer in between the weed beds. And that's a really good tip for you at home. Look for the weed and then lay your plastic 
around the sandy banks adjacent to weed, and that's where the fish will sit. Get into those little sandy holes and you'll pull a fish. Well, <laughs> easier said than done, Ryan. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, we're just getting to that little area right now. Hey mate, finally, oh, it's happened. Hey, it's, it is net worthy, it's net worthy. <laughs> oh jeez, hang on, all right, don't lose it. And the tip is, don't lose it. <laughs> Keep it going mate. Keep it, lift him. Oh yeah, nice lizard buddy. Oh yes sir, thank Very you. Very good. As one bearded burbler said to another, Thank you, mother, for the rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's been registered on, but anyway. Mate, nice little flatty there. Uh, he smashed that Louis. I see you've changed over a little bit there too, Yeah, eh? yeah apparently gulp works. Um, <laughs> yeah, how many have you caught? 32 to my one. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, quality, not quantity, <laughs> all right? And you're doing, you're doing justice there, everyone. Very nice. Mate, that nice little uh, rod actually uh, worked quite well. Yeah, it did actually. You know, so nice light tip on it, plenty mm -hmm. of guts down below to pull those fish back as well. Yep, no, worked really well. Highly recommended. Perfect. All righty, there you go, everybody. Nice work, buddy. Mate, thanks for joining us today. Been a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Thanks for having us. Not a problem. If you're going to be up around southeast Queensland, jump into Tingalpa Anaconda, have a chat with Ryan or any other Anaconda store around this magnificent country of ours. And before we say goodbye, here's some tips for you. We'll see you next time when we, of course, we... Step outside. Hey. <laughs> it's like I bought one. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's some tips to catching flathead. I like to use a medium two to five kilo spin stick. I find the one to threes can be a little bit too light when pushing the hook through. A light six to 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. Start light, end up heavy if the fish are biting you up. 85 millimeter squidgy fish or gulp three inch prawns work a treat. Now cast the sandy holes around the weed beds. That's where the fish will lie. And retrieve with a light twitch movement on the wrist. And of course, thanks for watching Step Outside YouTube channel for lots of cooking and fishing action. Like, subscribe, and of course, comment for more catches like this and cooking recipes.